This is a barista made espresso chocolate sponge pudding because 30 milliliters of the best quality espresso coffee is needed, but brewed pour over coffee will work great too. When the small jar of espresso sponge pudding cooled down to room temperature, I placed a scoop of brown sugar gelato on top of it and served it with a demi tasse spoon. The pudding was like a soft cookie on top and a soft sponge as I worked my way down to the bottom. The bittersweet flavors of chocolate and espresso can be adjusted with a little sugar, but I like to adjust the sweetness with the sweetened ice cream. Brown sugar gelato has a very subtle cane sugar and molassesy flavor that pairs well with dark chocolate and espresso coffee drinks. This is a way to make espresso chocolate sponge pudding. I scaled 15 grams of room temperature butter and 15 grams of liquid honey into a small mixing bowl. I creamed the honey into the butter and set the sweetened butter aside. I scaled 30 grams stone ground all-purpose flour, 30 grams brown sugar, 30 grams melted butter, 15 grams cocoa, 60 grams high fat cream and quickly mix them together in a small mixing bowl. I added an egg and mixed until combined. I placed three 125 milliliter mason jars in a high sided frying pan and divided the batter between the jars. I added a small dollop of honey butter on top to mix with the espresso as it falls through the batter. I used Arabica beans from Sumatra and roasted the coffee a little past medium from my espresso machine. I poured a 30 milliliter shot of espresso over top of the buttered batter one pudding at a time. I moved the jar to distribute the coffee around better and repeat this process for the rest of the puddings. This barista made pudding has one third of its volume from espresso brewed coffee so the better tasting coffee will make a big difference in how successful the sponge pudding tastes. I poured boiling hot water into the frying pan 30 millimeters deep or a little over an inch deep. The coffee falls to the bottom of the jar which will help to gently steam the pudding as we cook the jars in a water bath and low heat 325 degree Fahrenheit oven for 40 minutes. I transferred the espresso chocolate sponge pudding jars to a rack to cool down to around room temperature or cooler. The texture changes a bit into more of a soft brownie when they are refrigerated. The oven gently cooks the honey and butter together into a soft cookie crust on top. When they first came out of the oven, the crust was still bubbling. As the pudding cools, the pudding collapses a little bit, which makes room for a scoop of brown sugar gelato. This is a way to make brown sugar gelato. I scaled two egg yolks, 60 grams demerara style brown sugar, 5 milliliters vanilla extract, 100 grams high fat cream, 300 grams whole milk, and mixed them together until well combined. I transferred the mixture to a freezer bag, draped over a wide mouth mason jar, and to make it easier to fill the bag I used a jar filling funnel. I made sure the seal of the freezer bag was closed tightly and added the bag to a water bath with an immersion circulator set at 85 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. I transferred the hot custard into an ice bath to cool down before placing it in the refrigerator. I like to allow a custard base to mature in the fridge overnight because I believe resting the custard will thicken and improve the custard's texture and improve the custard's taste. I strained the custard through a fine mesh sieve to remove any sugar crystals or coagulated egg to make the gelato very smooth. I chilled down the bowl of a gelato machine for a few minutes until frosty and poured in the custard when the paddles were moving. 
The gelato is done when it comes away from the sides of the bowl and starts to gather into a rolling ball. I transferred the gelato to four 125 milliliter mason jars and fastened the lids. Brown sugar gelato is a great alternative to vanilla. It has a very subtle cane sugar and molasses flavor. I like to freeze the gelato in 125 milliliter mason jars because it makes it easier to control my portion size and it makes it easier to bring the gelato up to an ideal serving temperature of minus 12 to minus 8 degrees Celsius.